Jessica, congratulations uh, on your win. Uh, certainly a very, very impressive victory for you tonight. I wonder, of course, you were confident, but did you even know that you could get the job done that, that quickly tonight? Parabéns pela vitória, né? Mas foi uma vitória super surpreendente. Você sabia ou acreditava que você ia conseguir, né? Um nocaute tão rápido assim? Olha, eu treinei muito durante três meses para essa luta, só Muay Thai. Todos os dias eu tinha uma aula particular de Muay Thai. E eu vim acreditando que eu ia nocautear, mas eu não imaginava que ia nocautear tão rápido no primeiro round. Mas eu vim muito confiante, eu sabia de toda a minha força, tudo que eu podia fazer lá dentro. Conhecia todas as técnicas da Carolina e deu tudo certo. Eu consegui nocautear e foi essa vitória aí arrasadora que eu tenho certeza que não tem dúvidas de que eu possa ser a próxima a disputar o cinturão. You know, we were really looking to make a statement with this fight and uh, we knew that going toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with Carolina would be important. So she had uh, private classes of Muay Thai every single day, sometimes a couple times a day, because the whole plan was that, you know, we're coming in and we wouldn't leave without the knockout. And it happened quicker than we expected, but it came, so all the work paid off. <laughs> Can you tell us what was going through your head? Because you heard her right away, uh, but then she recovered a little bit and she started landing a few shots on you as well, uh, but she just kind of pressed through them and you got the beautiful finish. So can you just kind of walk us through what was going through your head as that was happening? Você pode passar um pouquinho do que, que rolou na luta, porque você começou pressionando, machucou ela, mas parece que deu um tempinho, ela conseguiu dar uma recuperada, acertou umas mãos, mas aí você conseguiu achar o nocaute. É, na verdade, eu estava esperando o tempo certo para achar o golpe perfeito para conseguir esse nocaute. É, eu senti que durante a luta, teve o, o começo do, da, da luta ali, eu consegui fazer ela ficar mais tonta, ela meio que bambiou. E aí eu fui achando o momento certo para colocar bons golpes e também mostrar que eu evoluí a minha parte de Muay Thai, que eu estava muito bem. E, inclusive, não saí sem nenhum machucado, então acho que eu consegui mostrar para todo mundo essa evolução que eu, que eu tive agora. You know, I noticed that I got her a little bit wobbly early in the round, but, you know, I, I knew that I wanted a proper knockout, and I trained so hard, <laughs> technique-wise and everything, so uh, I was really looking for the perfect timing and the, the perfect strike, and I knew that just rushing it wouldn't, might not cut it, so just work on it and keep looking for the, the proper timing and it ended up coming, so it worked. And last thing for me, you called for the title shot and I think a lot of people believe that you certainly deserve the title shot. I wonder what you feel the advantages you have over Rose would be and, and how you think that fight would go. Então você, no final da luta, pediu pela luta pelo cinturão, né? E como você vê uma luta entre você e a Rose rolando e o que, que você vê como uma, uma vantagem que você tem em cima dela? Bom, a Rose ela é uma atleta muito versátil, né? ela trabalha bem a trocação dela, evoluiu muito desde quando ela lutou com a Carolina, mas eu acredito que eu tenho grande chance de vencer e ser campeã do cinturão, tanto na trocação quanto é, na parte de chão. Eu, eu melhorei muito, eu acho que depois do, desse nocaute dessa noite, com certeza me deixou um passo mais próximo de poder disputar esse cinturão e mostrar para as pessoas que eu posso sim ser uma grande tocadora, uma jiu-jiteira e que eu vou dar muito trabalho para essas meninas na categoria. You know, uh, Rose is very versatile, but so am I. And I think um, my strength might be a, a big advantage when push comes to shove. You know, technique-wise, you know, she's very good. She does everything quite proper. But sometimes you just got to rough it up. <laughs> and I know that nobody can rough it up better than me. You know, there's no girl in this division that is as strong as I am. And I know for sure that's going to make a difference. Uh, if the fight comes, you know, I, the thing is I, I want the belt. And I'm going to do whatever I have to do. This time around, I had three months to prepare. If we get the fight in December, I'm going to have a full proper camp. And it's going to be a new Jessica, more evolved, better, just like I was on this fight compared to the last one. Uh, down in front here. Um, Jessica, congratulations. Um, I guess the follow-up question to that is, when would you like this fight to take place if, if you are the number one contender? Considering that you're a contender, when would you like to have this fight for the cinturon? Well, thank you. I think it's going to be for the 
para ter um tempo de treino e tudo mais, eu acho que dia 29 de dezembro seria uma data maravilhosa, inclusive tem duas brasileiras lutando, acho que isso chama bastante atenção do UFC e me colocaria num lugar muito legal também, acho que para a visão do, dos brasileiros, a visão do, no UFC também seria muito bom. E eu estaria bem pronta até o dia 29 de dezembro, quem não quer lutar no último, no último UFC do ano, e eu pedi é, essa luta para dia 29. Vamos ver o que o Dana, o UFC, tem planejado para mim, mas que aconteça essa luta. Só quero que aconteça. You know, we do have the two Brazilian belt holders fighting each other on December 29th. Happens that both are women. So uh, it would be really good if I could get my title fight there. You know, have a possibility of uh, ending the year with three Brazilian champions in the three uh, women's divisions. We know two of them are fighting each other, but, you know, unless it happens that Amanda wins, <laughs> we'll, we'll, well, in any case, we'll still have three belts under Brazilian reign. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of eyes there. And one thing that happened a couple of years ago, I was supposed to fight in, in Vegas. Uh, that one was against Marina Moroz initially, ended up going to Angela Hill. But because of the Sada issue back then, the fight got canceled. I was already in Vegas, so I ended up spending Christmas and New Year's Eve in Vegas without a fight. So I really want to go and, and get a fight and, you know, get that over with because that experience was good. But uh, I, went, I, came, I went there to fight and I want to fight in, in Vegas as soon as I can. Uh, just as well for me, um, is she aware that she's won a performance of the night bonus this evening? Ele tá avisando você que você ganhou o bônus da noite, não sei se você sabia. Eu fiquei sabendo na caminhada vindo para cá, tô muito feliz, né? Isso é, eu acho que é a grande conquista do bom trabalho, né, da minha equipe, da Mestre Paraná, da PRVT. E sem eles, acho que isso não aconteceria. Então, se hoje eu posso dar esse show, conseguir os bônus, é graças à minha equipe, a todo esse trabalho. E com certeza nós vamos buscar muito mais ainda. Yeah, we were told on the way here, so just pretty happy, and it's and it's more money to put towards camp, towards beating Rose, and you know it's gonna be it's very welcome, and it's gonna make a difference when the title fight comes. And just lastly, I guess uh, she's fought for the title once already. Uh, what, what's kind of the difference now between the Jessica Andrade we saw in that fight compared to, uh, I guess, the one we saw tonight and the one that will fight Rose Namajunas in the future? Você já lutou pelo cinturão uma vez, né? E o que que você vê de diferente na Jessica Andrade de hoje? com a Jéssica Andrade, que lutou pelo cinturão aqui em Dallas no ano passado. Bom, eu acredito que a minha luta pelo cinturão, é, eu não estava tão focada, eu não estava tão bem. Eu vim de lesão é, duas semanas antes da luta. Eu me lesionei grave, eu não conseguia fazer força, eu não conseguia travar, não conseguia jogar para o chão. Então, isso me deixou um pouco... É, sem confiança para fazer o meu estilo, a minha, a minha luta. E eu precisava colocar a luta para baixo. Então, acho que eu acabei dando espaço demais para a Joana. E hoje, graças a Deus, não existe mais isso. Eu tenho um grande trabalho, uma fisioterapia maravilhosa lá no Vasco, que cuida de mim, que me deixa pronta para minhas lutas. Então, eu, eu consegui lutar muito bem. E agora, sem lesão nenhuma, não tem como não trazer as vitórias né, para o Brasil. E eu sou uma lutadora bem mais focada, bem mais forte e bem mais preparada para qualquer adversário. Eu acho que eu tenho uma melhor compreensão de quem eu sou e o que eu sou capaz de fazer. E isso faz muita diferença, confiança. Quando eu lutei com a Joana, eu tive uma boa injury like duas semanas antes do jogo. Eu acabei de me levantar, caiu na minha cabeça. And that was a huge issue. By fight week, it was better, but the confidence level was at the lowest ever. So I came into the fight just, you know, to do the fight, you know, we'll never know what's going to happen, but uh, that was a big issue back then. And I, during the fight, I ended up just letting Joanna take control of the fight. And once you let that happen with Joanna, we were pretty much done. So, you know, I think a fight today would go a lot different. You know, I have a much better support for recovery nowadays. I got a sponsorship from a, a soccer team, Vasco, in, Sao Paulo, in, in Rio de Janeiro. And they're providing me with all recovery. Because in Brazil, unfortunately, we don't have the, the support that the fighters have here. You know, you can just go to Vegas and get everything done. Brazil is a little bit tougher. So that would make a huge difference if that ever comes to happen again. But that's the main thing. I, I know myself a lot better. And you saw uh, a consequence of that on tonight's fight.
Yeah, Jessica. Uh, as everyone knows, the co-main event was canceled and you took the spot. Uh, UFC 20, uh, uh, 228 has been blowing up on Twitter as an incredibly exciting event, one of the most exciting ones in years. Uh, with you winning performance of the night, or, or, or one of them, how does it feel to become a person to help save this event? É, o evento ele teve diversos problemas, né? Inclusive perdeu o comando event e você acabou entrando nessa posição. É, o evento no Twitter, no, na internet em geral, está sendo titulado como um dos melhores eventos do ano, um dos mais excitantes que rolaram no ano. Como você se sente estando nessa posição, né? De comando event e entregando uma performance dessa e meio que salvando o evento, de acordo com quem perguntou. Bom, é, geralmente eu sempre, isso sempre acontece comigo, né? Eu sempre entro no, no lugar e aí acabo salvando o evento, né? Mas eu estou muito feliz. É, infelizmente, a, coisas acontecem durante os eventos, né? Que nem a, cair a luta da, da, da Valentina. Mas eu até me propus é, lutar pelo, pelo cinturão também, se eles topassem. Mas como eu já tinha me pesado, já, já tinha feito todo o trabalho pela comissão atlética e eu não podia lutar, mas eu estou muito feliz de ter conseguido ajudar a organização, a ajudar o UFC a fazer um show e, e empolgar as pessoas. Eu acho que é esse o nosso trabalho, é entrar lá dentro e empolgar todos que estão assistindo, dar o nosso melhor, tentar nocautear e foi isso que eu fiz hoje. You know, a funny thing is that uh, when we found out about the the problem with Nico, we were in line to get weighed in. And we got in touch with the UFC, and Jessica offered to to be a replacement for Nico if they were planning on keeping the fight or doing something like that. The only issue was that you know she was pretty much on the scale, and she weighed in at 116, and because of a commission uh, rule, and they they won't allow a certain weight dis uh, disparity between the the two fighters, so that couldn't happen. But you know, knowing what Valentina went through and having been there before. She thought she, you know, she wished that someone would have stepped up and taken the fight when she was in Vegas, and she did all the the camp and did everything, got there and couldn't get a fight. And poor Valentina, she it's the fucking third time that she's been through that, you know. So Jessica offered, you know, unfortunately we couldn't make it happen, and I hope that Valentina gets her title shot and she gets her belt because it's her belt, uh, so as soon as possible. Um, That's the thing, you know. Uh, Jessica always comes to to put on a show. It happens that this time around she got to do it as a common event. Unfortunately, it was because of, the, of what happened to Valentina. But you know, that's what she's here to show, and that's what you know she's here to do for the UFC. Ha, 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 ha.
time. Congratulations. A, a very uh, impressive victory this evening for sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. No worries. I want to ask you, I mean, obviously you, you hurt him on the feet. You, you finished him off on the floor with a submission. Uh, how did this play out versus your expectations? You know, um, I expected just to be versatile and not to be, you know, one dimensional. I know he was going to be looking for a lot of wrestling attacks and a lot of just um, single punches. But everybody I watched in the past, they just went and shot on him from the open, weren't successful. Um, anybody who threw one, two shots got countered very well. So I had to be a little bit creative on how I, I closed the distance. He's a great counter puncher, really sharp with his straight left. And, um, I mean, a lot of leverage and balance. I know I wasn't going to be able to just blast on a shot and take him down, but I know I can wear him down um, punch by punch and just you know keep throwing different attacks to kind of throw him off. You're used to answering your doubters all the time and proving people wrong, but I wonder, is anything about this one particularly satisfying for you? I mean, all the hype that was around him and that sort of thing. Does, is anything about this win special for you? You know, I think I just you know really redirected my mind. You know, Dan Lambert told me this a long time ago. He said, just win. Win and conquers everything if you really think about it. I can say, I can try to make you report a certain way. I can make a fan um, go and say I'm the greatest of all time. But at the end of the day, as long as you keep winning and you keep you know, building up your stats and people go back and look at your resume, at the end of the day, they're going to recognize you're the greatest of all time. So that's really my focus. That's why I've been so quiet. You know, I didn't overly celebrate after the fight. I didn't talk a lot of crap. You know, I just went out there and got the job done. I wanted to just take the pressure. He had all, I told you guys, he had all the pressure. You got to beat the, you know, one of the greatest welterweights of all time. You got to beat this guy with single punch knockout power. You got to beat this wrestler, and you know you're going to be the champion. And we may go to the O2 Arena. You know, <clears throat> I've been in that position before, and it's a lot to, a lot to bear. And um, certain, certain parts of this week, I kind of looked at him and I kind of empathized because I'm like, he don't recognize he's going to lose. He don't. You when you undefeated, you don't know. You know, I've been in that position, ten and zero, rising star. Everybody thought I was, you know, the, the hottest thing on the block. Got knocked out, and it broke my heart, and I never thought I was going to lose. So I think he'll rebuild the same way. He's tough. He's confident, and um, he'll have a promising future. You got your black belt tonight as well. Oh, yeah. I was waiting on somebody. <laughs> I'm so geeked. I've been wearing this thing to the bathroom everywhere, everywhere I go. I, somebody just touched it a minute ago. They almost got jumped on. <laughs> Somebody put a, um, put a sticker on my um, belt. Well, tell us about that because it looked like, I mean, from your reaction to that, it looked like that getting that black belt might have meant as much as this title defense or, or more. You know, it's up there. For sure, you know I've been um, I've been doing jujitsu since 2005. You know I saw I was a wrestler and you know I was started training at American Top Team. At the time, I was so ignorant to the sport I didn't know what American Top Team was. So it was a satellite school that sprouted up, and it was American Top Team. It was the first team I ever fought for. So I started doing jujitsu with that team. So I was basically wrestling jujitsu, crazy shape. And I used to just swing like hell and then take guys down and do whatever I needed to do. So I didn't really start striking for a year or so. So <clears throat> for me to get a black belt, especially from Dino, like a lot of people don't know the story behind Dean. Dean's a little quiet wonder back there. He won't say much. But in 2006, I was at an amateur fight. And they was like, this Dean Thomas, he the number one you know, lightweight in the world. And I said, oh, cool. I said, can you corner me real quick? And now thinking back, like if somebody would do that to me right now, he said, all right. So he cornered me. He came back again. Next time I saw him, I said, hey, man, can you corner me again? Not high, not what you're doing. I, how was your day? I just asked him randomly, can he corner me? He said, yeah. So after that, I said, I want you to be my head coach. And it didn't start immediately where he gave me 100% of his time. But I was winning fights. And then I tell you, I was kind of putting my camps together by myself. All with him to Kevin Gastelum. A long time. I mean, through the graces of God and, you know, just being tough, you know, I was able to pull it together. And Dean took me under his wing. He collaborated with Duke Rufus. Eric Brown's been my coach since 2008 at Wildcard Boxing. And the ad had been asking at the end of that. And these guys just became the Autobots. They worked, they worked together well. Everybody that's a great fighter or a great coach don't always mesh. Sometimes it's ego involved. If you watch these guys – talk about the sport and what did he do in wrestling, how it can incorporate into boxing, how the boxing, there's no ego, and it's almost like listening to a symphony. So to get the black belt from Dean after all we've been through, like not just training, just Dean probably tired of me by now. You know, so so he said I am. Uh, <laughs> but it, it just meant a lot to me, man. It just, um, I remember walking out to the cage and I gave him a hug, and I'm like, man, dude, we doing it. We, we've been at this for a long time. And I remember my eyes kind of getting a little watery because I'm like, man, this dude has been there for me for a long, long time. So when he put the black belt on me, it definitely, 
emotionally, you know, made me a little bit more, you know, rewarding than I was going to win that anyway. <laughs> I came ready to win that. This was a surprise. Nice. And Tyron, last thing for me, lay out what happens next. I mean, everybody's pointing to Kobe Covington saying that's the fight they want to see. <laughs> is, it, is that the fight you want at all? Is it the dude that needs the Claritin, the Zyrtec? <laughs> My God. This guy had his chance. He let Darren Till go out there and take his whooping for him. He tried to pause and try to wait to a bigger pay-per-view because his eyes got big. Um, my thing is I'm going to fight anybody. I'm the best in the world. Anybody put in front of me, they're going to get beat up. If it's Kobe Covington, if it's Usman, if it's Robert Whitaker, if it's whoever they want me to fight, we're going to do it. So what needs to happen is they're going to call my manager. They're going to make me an offer for a fight. And if it makes sense for me, it's going to happen. So I'm not saying I am going to fight him because I don't feel like he deserves my platform right now. He had the chance to be here. Um, he, he bitched out, if you want to be honest and frank. He talked all that crap, and then he got in the hot seat. The second he won that belt, I said, let's come get this smoke. He got quiet. Instagram accounts got taken down for a brief moment, and he didn't say nothing. So I think it's an embarrassment to the sport, and – if if that's the next person that's got to get to work, you won't have to you won't have to do much to get me up for that fight. So we'll see. Um, I'll talk to my manager and whoever whoever they talk to. They gonna they gonna call next week. They they already kind of know what they want to do. So you guys are here pretty soon. Uh, Tyron, I guess just off off the back of that is is UFC two thirty like in the realms of possibility. I mean, you, was that Madison Square Garden? Yeah, that, that's why I had that fight in the night, isn't it? I mean. It, could could you do it? You, you didn't even take a single strike tonight. You know, um, I think I can do it. What's that? November what? Third. Third. November third. Yeah, I can do that. Why are y'all looking at? Yeah. yeah I, mean. <laughs> I can fight in November. Is that is that is that what y'all trying to get? I mean, they haven't got a main event at the moment. Oh, they ain't got a main event. Well, where my manager at anyway? <laughs> where is he at? You know, um, let me say this. I'm here to stay. It's the Woodley Way division. I'm excited to be back. Um, as I told you guys before, I don't really believe in ring rust. You know, my mind stays sharp. You know, I was able to train a lot of different tools that you guys saw tonight and really disguise my right hand. And the more I fight, the better I get. And the more comfortable I get, the more confident I get. So I want to stay as active as possible. Um, if November is the date that they're looking for a main event, I think they got their guy. Uh, the DOS choke you finished the fight with, is, is that one of your go-tos or is that uh, something you just kind of pulled off tonight? You know, shoot, my first my first five wins um, as a professional was a submission, a couple of them by a DOS choke. It's a, it's a submission that really works well for wrestlers because we always used to be in the front hand lock position. And as I was punching and elbowing him, um, I was sneaking that hand underneath there. And I knew he didn't know what I was doing, so I'm like, I'm either going to finish him with these punches or elbows which he seemed to eat pretty well, or I'm gonna keep creeping my hand up because there was some sweat involved, and I creep. I got it to. All you gotta have is your hand showing. Once my hand was showing, I put my stomach on the top of his head, locked it in. And once I had it locked it in, I knew it was over with. Uh, one name you didn't mention a minute ago. You went through a whole a whole list of them. Was George St. Pierre? Like he's previously distanced himself uh, from a fight with you, but I mean you're racking up these kind of welterweight title defenses now. And, it's a big opportunity, I guess, to prove that you are the best welterweight of all time with the fight with him. Is that something that appeals to you? I mean, it's always appealed to me, but uh, I'm not going to keep calling out a guy that has already had nine title defenses, ran over the division. He stepped away from the sport. He came back. He made it very obvious that he wanted to fight certain types of fights, and it didn't look like he wanted to fight me. So um, at one point, I thought I needed to be him to be the greatest because, to, I mean, who's going to say he's not the greatest welterweight of all time? You know, he beat the best welterweights in the world, it wasn't like he was just running through, you know, guys that was horrible. He was beating studs after stud after stud, and he really separated himself from everybody else. So I watched him do that for so long, and I always envisioned him fighting him, always envisioned him beating him. Uh, and I told myself that I had to beat him to be the greatest, but I don't. This sport is different. These guys are better. They're more well-rounded. They punch harder. They're faster. And they've been training at a younger age. It's not the, the wrestler. They just learn how to punch. Everybody can do everything now. So I think the fact that I've been able to beat the last specialist in the game, beat the up-and-coming rising star, beat Robbie Lawler, who's one of the most vicious fighters we've ever seen with two, two title fights at 
I think we're probably in the top ten of tit- uh, title fights of all times. That um, <clears throat> it don't take much more for me to solidify that pot. But if he wants to fight me, of course I'm gonna fight George St. Pierre. I just don't really think he has to. I don't think he has any interest in it, and I'm kind of over it at this point. And just lastly for me, since um, you've left the octagon with the, your black belt and, and your title, have, have you spoken to Dana White? Oh, I haven't spoken to him yet. Did he already come in here? No. He left. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, no. Nah, I haven't talked to him. What would you say to him when you do see him? Because obviously he had, uh, I guess, a few words uh, about you yesterday in terms of like the, the fight this evening. You know, I just um I just focus on fighting and winning. You know, I, I did a great job. I got my phones taken away from me a couple of days earlier. Usually fight day I have my phone snatched, but I didn't have my phone um <clears throat> the last couple of days, so I didn't read any articles. But at the end of the day, you know, what speaks louder than going out there and being victorious? So um I to be honest, Dana might say something this week, next week he might say something different. I don't know. So I don't take offense to it. I just go out there and fight, win. And my goal is to be the greatest in the world. And if I got to go through a whole bunch of different obstacles to get that, then, I mean, I'm built for it. That's, that's what I'm in here for. Hey, Tyron, uh, say, uh, you get the match, say you get a matchup and things align with uh, Whitaker or GSP. How would you feel about a potential Colby versus Usman matchup? And what are your thoughts on how that would go? You know, it would probably make sense for Colby and Usman to fight to see who fights me. But I'm not the matchmaker. I'm not the person that's going to put that together. Um, if, if the organization thinks that one of those guys fighting me sooner is a, is a better draw and a better push for the company, then they're going to try to push for that. Um, <clears throat> if it was the old days, it would be a no-brainer. Those guys will fight to see who's going to fight me. Um, <clears throat> Robert Whitaker and um, Gaslam, I've already beat Gaslam, and uh, Robert Whitaker is a former welterweight, so those are fights that I will always be willing to take as well. So I'm just going to say train and stay prepared, mentally sharp, and ready to roll. Okay, and uh, we know your thoughts on Colby. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kamaru, especially in terms of in terms of his game? Are there things you see in his skill set that you appreciate watching as a fighter? No, I think Kamaru's dope. Yeah, it's just a lot of things about him, and it's a it's a reason why a lot of people aren't calling him out. It's a reason why he's having a tough time getting fights. Um, he's a strong wrestler, and long reach, um, getting more comfortable in the striking, um, great takedowns, and he has a lot of composure. And you don't get that composure. Um, as early as he's gotten it. So I think he, he presents a lot of problems for a lot of welterweights. So but me, I'm, I love the challenge, though. You know, it's, it's nothing like sitting down, breaking guy down on film, game planning, strategizing. My coaches really get up for it. They enjoy it. Sometimes, uh, you know, Carlos Conant, I mean, I remember me and Dean watched the first day of footage, and was like, damn, this dude good. <laughs> you know, it was like, like – not even getting nervous. It was like I was trying to steal some of his technique. So the tougher the opponent has been for me, the more it's gotten me up. Darren Till got me up because he was hungry and he believed it. And he thought he was going to win. And he was confident. And he had vicious striking. And he knew how to gauge distance well. You know, we thought he was going to rush Wonderboy. I thought he was going to rush Wonderboy and get knocked out because that's what everybody else did. But he took his time. He picked his shots. He was very composed. He showed intelligence out there. So, um, <coughs> Yeah, you know, I knew what I was up against, and um, he was more than just a gorilla. You know, that's sometimes it's easy to fall behind, you know, the rah-rah, but when you're really a cerebral fighter, fighter you know, um, you don't want to give that away. People are just not starting to recognize that's me. It's been me the whole time. But I let everybody think I was just this crazy, right-hand swinging, extra calf muscle-having athlete. And I let them think that, and, and, and I milked the game all the way until we got right here. Now it's too late. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, do you feel because you, you talked you talked a little bit about uh, how your first few fights uh, you won by submission? Do you feel your performance tonight won you over a few new a few new fans and converted some of the haters? Um, you know, <clears throat> I can't focus on that, man. I just focus on proving the people that believe me and supported me, proving them right. A lot of people put a lot of times. Boy, if you know how many people were praying for me today, I was I walked in there with a lot, you know, a lot of weight in there today. You know, it's a lot riding. You know, a lot of people. You know. I got to support and just thinking about everything after this. And, you know, your platform is not the same as non-champion, man. Life is way different, you know. So just the thought of somebody can crack you with a four-ounce glove and your life is different the next day. You know, I walked in there heavy and I had to ask for some additional prayers. You know what? Take me out of my own mind. You know, it's God. Give God the glory. Go out there. Do what you have to do. It's already won. The battle is won. You just got to be a willing vessel. Take a deep breath. Go out there. You got the skills. You got the ability. So... With prayer, for me, that, that really secured a victory because I went out there 
I just felt light. I just felt light. I felt loose. You know, um, even when I was elbowing them, you know, I exerted a lot of energy. And I stopped for one second. I said, keep going. You got it in you. And I kept going. And that, that's just such a savage moment for myself to just know that if he got up, I still got three more rounds to put it on him. Hi, Tyron. There's um, some footage of you and Darren meeting backstage. Yeah. Um, what exactly did you guys say to each other after the fight? No, he just said, I don't deserve the criticism I get. He said, I'm a great champion. He said, he, uh, hopefully, you know, I'm going to still around long enough for him to get another shot. And I told him to shake right on the road, man. I said, you know, this happens to the best of us. You'll be fine. You know, you'll still, you're a great fighter. And, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll sprout from this. You'll grow from this. So he said, cool. And going off of that, you and Darren have had a respectful build up to this. How do you anticipate the build up to a fight with Covington if that happens <laughs> next? Queefy and Tim is not getting no respect from me at all. He don't deserve, he don't even deserve to be in the sport. He, he's not, he's not a, he's a guy that basically at least, at least be like 10% real. Like when you just go 90, 90% just malarkey, like I can't even, I can't even deal with it. I can't even watch it. Like his Instagram page was 90% me. You got to check your man card at a certain point. Like, what are you doing? So for me, We'll see. I, yeah, I sound like y'all making a fight. <laughs> is that is that what Dana said you want me to fight next? Yeah, he said anything. All right. We want to see it. I just want to see that man get whooped. <laughs> yeah, uh, j uh, just a quick comment, Tyron. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter the, the, the way you get a victory, but um, this was your first submission victory uh, since uh, uh, 2009, yeah. which is incredible. I, someone brought that up on Press Row. But it's kind of extraordinary. You you fought so well, and I was like, wow, almost a decade. So a little little tidbit, in, uh, interesting tidbit there. Uh, I really want to say the following. So you tonight you've retained your world title. You earned your black belt. You won a performance of the night, and you won the hearts of even more fans. Someone mentioned that earlier. I mean, are you aware of this extraordinary night of winning? And does tonight feel high up there in your accomplishments? You know, I just want to give God the glory, man. I can't even say nothing else. I'm going to be honest with you because, you know, what people don't recognize is when they lock the octagon, when it locks, everything that I deal with in life goes away. Literally. I can be going through the most craziest crap that nobody ever know about, but when they lock the octagon, for some reason, it's the only place that everything goes away and I can just be free and I can just fight. So... As I said earlier, my prayer is just, just give me the victory. I give you the glory. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the weapon of destruction. Like I'm the one that's going to be used to go out there and send the message. I mean, you listen to the song I walked out to. You know, I think it's a stronger point, stronger message, um, a, a more positive use that we can use our platform for. And that's my goal to continue to do that. Obviously, to continue to kick ass too. So, um, when you think about a division like ours, it's reinventing itself so many times. You know, the post Euro St. Pierre era, then I'm the last one. Look at I'm the last one of the era, post post Jean St. Pierre, if you really think about it. It was guys like me and Ella Merger and, you know, um Hector Lombard and Robbie Lawler and Carlos Condon and Matt Brown and Rick Story and Gunnar Nelson. And who the guy still sitting here smacking people upside the head. You know what I mean? And that's a blessing. That's because of the mindset, the humility. I really focus on giving my opponents the respect they deserve, and we break them down to a molecule. So if I got some new fans, man, I appreciate it, definitely. Um, but to be frank and honest, the people that was hating on me anyway, I was trying to just not focus on it. <laughs> I was just focusing on winning, man. It, it's tough. It's tough in this division to win multiple title defenses. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to get any easier. I mean, everybody's going to come after you even harder. Tyron, you mentioned uh, you know watching film with Dean. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, was that lead uppercut something that you saw as an opening? Did I hit him with lead uppercut? Uh, he threw in lead uppercut and you counted. I I, I saw him um I saw him do a lot of lead uppercuts in the countdown. That's why I try not to give nothing in the countdown because I was, I'm like he threw a whole bunch of straight left lead uppercuts. Hmm. I think he's trying to catch me because if you if you punch offline. You put yourself right in um, position for a lead uppercut. So what we did was a lot of parrying. Um, Duke kept saying, be relaxed. 
have swag out there, hand fight, hand fight. And you saw a couple times where I just grabbed his wrist and grabbed his hand. We actually prepared a nasty look, a counter to the rear uppercut. That's what he was jumping in with a lot, of jumping rear uppercut. So when he threw that lead uppercut, you just see me kind of take my head offline so I can throw the punch because I was assuming the left hand was going to come next. But before he can get the left hand off, I had already landed the right. So we did a lot of punching offline, a lot of weaving, um, punching with him. You know, me and Eric worked there. Like, actually, I was just looking at um, – I do the series that you guys probably know about called the Champ Camp. On the Champ Camp, if you look at the top of this last episode, you're going to see the same exact punch. Me and Duke working on it. He throw a punch, I slip and punch. Me and Eric Brown working on the same punch. And it's just great to have like-minded coaches that see the same thing. And uh, lastly for me, you, you're currently number seven on the uh, pound for pound rankings. Do you feel like you should be higher than that? Eventually I'm gonna be one. So I, I just, you know, when I was r ranked for a long time, I used to get bent out and say, oh, how's he ranked this? And I start thinking like, I'm number three, but I'm trying to be letter C. So once you get to the champion, you don't care about one through 10 anymore. So my goal is to continue to become the greatest welterweight of all time. And I think without focusing on the pound for pound, I think eventually I'm gonna start chiseling up to the top of that. So as long as I'm the GOAT when it comes to the welterweight division, you know, we'll worry about the pound for pound after that. Your mom had some encouraging words for Till. It was really sweet to see. What has she meant to your career, your life, and when you have t tough times, I mean, how has she been there? Well, my mom has always been there. She, you know, she was an ultimate sacrificer, and she had worked like three or four jobs to make sure that um, we had what we needed. It's 13 of us in the house. A lot of times I was able to go to every wrestling camp, every football thing. You know, I don't know if you guys know, but I've been an athlete since I was 10 years old. I've never had off season. 26 years straight with no break, no off season, straight through. That's been my life. Uh, she's missed one fight and one wrestling match ever. And the one wrestling match was in Russia. So that can kind of tell you right there. So just the support system and just the sacrifice and just the mentality. I mean, she's tough. She said, no, you punch his ass in the, um, uh, in the throat and the solar plex. Bring him down to you. And then when I came out, when I came out the uh, octagon, she said, yep, I told you. Punch him right there. Bring him down to your level. So um, sometimes, especially growing up where I grew up, you need that tough love. You know, everything ain't sweet. Everything ain't nice. Everything ain't, you know. Um, today's a great day. So just having that tough love is the things I needed, you know, when you get in the octagon. You know, I was ready for war. What if you would have cracked me with a left hand? What if you would have landed one of those vicious elbows he catch people when they ride on the octagon? I would have had the broken nose. I was imagining walking there. What if my nose is broken and I'm, I got blood in my mouth? Like you still got to fight. I, I play every worst-case scenario in my mind, and in no case do I think about giving up. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, guys.
Darren, of course, uh, not the result you were hoping for tonight, but uh, I mean, this was just such a, a monumental event in, in your career and a massive build up to this. Can you tell us kind of what the emotion is like for you right now at this point? Uh, I don't really know. I don't know. It's just hard to take a loss. You know, I have lost in the past before the uh, mixed martial arts, and you know, it wasn't nice then. But it's it's even more. You know, it's 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 hurts more now because of where it where it is. Where, what it, it just hurts because you know I got there. I was just nearly there. You know, to do what I said. Uh, you know, I set out to do get that belt and be the greatest. And I am still going to be the greatest. I know that. You know, I just spoke to Woodley backstage and he's lost. John Jones has lost, George St. Pierre's lost. The, the, all the greats have lost. And you know what, that's my first loss tonight. And you know, it just, right now, there's, I'm still okay, but I'm just upset. It just, there's, there's no there's no sugar coating it. I'm not gonna sit here and, or anything, I'm just, I'm just upset. I'm sure you and your team will go back and dissect everything. But but when you think about it right now, I mean, can you put your finger on, on what went wrong? Was it just as simple as being caught by that right hand, or, or, or was it more than that? Uh, no, it was. I got caught, but I, I just I was too relaxed. I was too confident. And I am huge. I'm always confident. Everyone knows that. But I was too, like, the job had already been done in my head because camp went so well, weight cut went so well. Everything went so well. I just thought I've turned up. I'm just. I just need to win. And I knew what he was gonna do. I knew he was gonna come out guns blazing in the face because I knew he had that fear. So you know, I knew what he was gonna do, and he didn't hit me with no punches. He got the flash knocked down, but you know, even when I, he was in my guard and he was throwing he heavy elbows and punches, I was just laughing. And you know, that's why he subbed me. There was no way he was gonna finish me. I am, I'm a tough person to put out, but. Uh, I didn't, you know, I just, backstage, I just, I was just too confident, I was walking around, I wasn't really warming up, I was just ready to go in there and fight, and, you know, maybe, if I look back, I should have warmed up, I should have been a bit more aggressive backstage, just, I'm, I'm a weird person, it's weird, because sometimes backstage, I'll warm up hard, and I'll be aggressive, and then sometimes, I'll just be like, oh, I'll just, i relax, I'm not like, I don't have the same type of ritual for every fight, and this, this time, it, it cost me, it cost me a, in my eyes, it cost me everything, you know, because this is, as you say, everything. It's, it's even more important than you. <laughs> no, that's a joke. I shouldn't say that again. <laughs> Darren, I'm sure you still have, uh, you know, plenty of great days ahead. But I, I wonder, does this close the door on the welterweight division for you? Or, or does this loss maybe kind of reignite a fire to, to, to keep chasing it? I don't know. It's, 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 that's the... That's the a good question to ask right now. Uh, I don't really know how to give you a straight answer right now. Uh, you know, <clears throat> the weight cut was easy. The weight cut was really easy. I, I mean, I, I, as soon as the fight got announced, I was eating clean, but I was still eating normally. Like, you know, I wasn't depriving myself. And then as soon as I got to Vegas, three weeks out, that's when I was eating incredibly clean, but I was still eating a lot. That day, is, you, you guys came to the Institute was the day where I'd cut back on a lot of stuff, but I was still okay, but I was just, you know, pissed off with dieting. But in my mind, I can still do three weeks and make weight like that again. So it's it's a tough one. It's all, as you say, it's down to, me, you know, Colin, no matter what I say, I'll still always listen to him 100%. Uh, I don't know, I just... It just pisses me off that someone was better than me tonight. It really does. Like, I had to walk past them, and I've got the utmost respect for anyone who fights, but I just uh, I can't live with myself knowing that tonight he was better than me. He's not a better fighter than me, but tonight he was better, and it does really... It kills me inside, it does. I'm not going to lie, it kills me inside. It hasn't affected me in any way. I'm still a mentally tough, most toughest motherfucker out there, but fucking tonight it hurts. <laughs> Uh, Darren, uh, I guess you've now lost that kind of tag of undefeated. Other people say sometimes it's a bit liberating and that they, they think about it, but is this something you've kind of been thinking about and being afraid to lose ever before? No, I'm, I'm not afraid to lose. I've said it in interviews. I mean, a loss, a loss has to come to everyone. I, I believe no matter what you do, that there is certain people who, who do get away with that. You know, Floyd Mayweather, some other guys, they get away with out, you know, that loss. 
I've lost very few times in my life. I really have. You, know, you just didn't know me before MMA. And, you know, I lost three times. I actually lost for a world title in Canada. And that was bitter. It was, that was just horrible for me. And, uh, it's just, it's one of them things I've, I'll face it head on. The, you, you know, it's all ups. It's all up since since I made me come back last year. You know, you, you got to remember I only came back last year after an eighteen month lay, eighteen month layoff. Fought in Sweden, Rotterdam, Poland, then I fought in you know Liverpool and now 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 Texas. It's it's been a ride for me. And the the losses came tonight. Listen, there'll probably be another loss, but as I say, I'm st I am still going to be the greatest fighter of all time. I know I am. This doesn't change anything. It's just as I say, I can't lie to you right now. I, I'm 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 upset. I'm I'm broken. I'm hurt tonight. I'm 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 a hurt person. You just said there. Obviously, you had a lot of fights in the last year. Um, what does the next kind of uh, I guess three six months look like for you? Do you want to take some time out? I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what that that means. I I, I could say, yeah. I could say no. I, obviously, I've I've got a kid on the way. I've got, you know, in November, me me and my girlfriend are going to have a baby and. You know, obviously that 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 deserves a lot of attention. Uh, as much as I say it doesn't, and I don't care, I do really care. <laughs> uh, I want to take a trip to to Brazil for maybe just one week, just to see me, me daughter. You know, I need that in my life. So you know, if I can fit all that in quick now and just keep on training, you know, hopefully fight fight again soon. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Just let the other guys in line now fight for the belt and. You know, let them have their shot. It just pisses me off so much that, well, you know, Woodley beat me. It just pisses me off so much. And just lastly for me, I guess um, losing hurts, obviously. You've, you've lost tonight, but is there any kind of positives you can draw from, like, the last three weeks of that experience being out in Vegas and, I guess, fighting here tonight in the main event? Yeah, as, as I say, mate, every single day should be positive, and every day was positive, just... <laughs> Everything leading up to about an hour ago, you know, th today was a great day. I woke up, I felt great, and then one hour ago, up until now, it's just fucking been shit. It's just been shit. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm laughing because I don't want to cry. <laughs> it's, it's, it is what it is, mate. Uh, it's, uh, it's fucking. It's hard. It's hard. It is hard to do. It's hard to take. Some some guys deal with it differently. And I just deal with face on. I just tell you what I'm fucking thinking. I don't care. You just know I don't care. Is it used to me by now? And tomorrow I'll be, I'll be back to to myself, and I'll still say fuck you to the world, and and, and keep on training hard, and just believing in myself. I do, I do believe in myself. You know, Tyler hits like a truck. Couldn't knock me out though. Hit me, got me the flash knockdown, but couldn't knock me out. Not knocking me out, and then. You know, that ground and palm was vicious. You know, look at my face, I've, you know, I'm stitched up, but there's no way he was knocking me out. It, it was submission or it was it was nothing. And, and you know, tonight he won. Hi, Dan. Was there anything about Tyron that surprised you? It seemed that he was um, maybe a little bit faster than you or had the timing. Yeah, he, I, but I knew that. This is the thing. I just knew that in the first, first and the second, I knew he was going to be on edge, I knew he was going to be, <clears throat> I knew, I knew Tan, you know, I don't know if he'd admit it all, but I knew he was scared of me, I knew he was scared, he, knew, he knows I've got power, he knows I'm a, you know, a big guy, so I knew he was trying different things, you know, he couldn't take me down, he was squeezing me up against the fence with so much strength, and he wasn't stronger than me, there's no way he was stronger than me, I, I could feel that, he was trying to trip me, and I was just... I was just in like, I don't know, I was just in motion just in the first and, and, and then, you know, the start of the second. I was like letting him do his thing because I knew that I was going to start doing my thing. Uh, as I say, you know, I just should have warmed up backstage better. There's no excuse, obviously, but I should just had a bit more aggression. Maybe I should have been more aggressive in the first. I'm always a calm, relaxed fighter in the first. I like to see what the other guy's going to do. And, you know, he was throwing power shots and I was just putting my guards up and shaking my head. I was like, you're not hurting me. And he knew he wasn't. I threw one left and he shook his head, but it was just like, a, you know, it wasn't, I put nothing behind it. You know, I just wish I could have got to the third and I could have started to open up on him and seeing what was happening, but I just got sloppy with that. I dropped my guard on that uppercut. I remember it perfectly. I dropped my guard and he come over with the right. He does it a lot and he got me with it. Um, and then 
there's a, a clip going around of you talking to his mum backstage. Um, what did she have to say to you? It's just one of them things. I, I, I mean, I don't know. The, is that clip already going? I mean, fucking the internet's fast, isn't it? I mean, I won't be on the internet for a few days. I just have to stay off that. I can't. I can't look at myself getting beat, but you know, I will. It, it's sh- no matter when you fight someone, it doesn't matter if you hate them or you you like them, whatever. I don't hate Tyler. It's never personal with me. If, if it's you know, I just wanted to. I wanted to kill Tyler as much as she wants to kill me for this fight, but. You know, you, you see you see a guy's mother, you see a guy's daughter. You see, you're not gonna stand there and disrespect them. You're not gonna, oh, cause I hate hate your son or whatever. I hate you. It doesn't work like that. Is that's his family. I've got my family. You know, some guys sometimes they do cross the line of uh, insulting family members. You know, girlfriends, whether it be girlfriends or whatever, online or to the face and. To me, it would never affect me. If someone did it, they just need to know that if they ever come face to face, it doesn't matter where it is, they need to be ready to fight with me because I'll fight with them. You know, I'm not about this pushing and shoving game. You know, weigh-ins, if someone goes, it goes. It does. It's not a push, it's a fucking punch coming to the face. And and she just gave me, she just gave me words of advice. It was comforting. She gave me a, a nice big hug and, you know, I said to her, be proud of your son, your son beat me tonight. You know, go and enjoy it. You, you deserve it. You deserve everything. You know, no matter what you say, people can give Tyler a hard time or what. He's, he's just, he's, he's beat everyone. And he's, beat, he's just beat me. Boring or not, in his last few fights, he just beat me. And that wasn't boring. And him and his family and his mother, they, they deserve it. So it was just, it was nice to get a hug from her. It really was. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Nice one.